Hello everyone, I hope everyone's having a great day today. Um, this video, uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Neil. I have liver cirrhosis, which there is no cure for. Um, and I tend to try to give information and I try to uh, kind of talk about what I go through and what you may experience going through the same kind of thing. Um, today I want to talk about blood tests and how to understand them because there's a lot of words that get thrown around and a lot of terms that are kind of confusing. So I'm gonna to try to simplify it a little bit if I can. Um, now forgive me if I say any of the words wrong or if I ex explain it a little goofy, um, I'll do my best. Uh, I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna to try to uh, get into a few of those things and also uh, some of the things that they use to be able to know where you're at based on your blood and, and what your results may be. Um, so anyway, a little bit about me. Um, again, like I said, I have cirrhosis, uh, which there is no cure for. Um, I'm going on two years now since my diagnosis. Um, I've been in what much worse situation. Um, I've been through the whole fluids building up, the varices, uh, I think I've had eight or nine varices binded. Um, I have three hernias from the muscles uh, weakening and and uh, um, losing that muscle mass and then the fluid building up and pushing my intestines out through them. Um, also, uh, I've filled up in the stomach. My right lung uh, kept on filling up over and over and over again to the point where they put a chest tube in at one point. Uh, now, cirrhosis, if you don't know, can be caused by a lot of things. A lot of people think that it's the the uh, alcoholic disease. You know, all people that were alcoholics, you know, only, only people who are alcoholics and drink too much for 20 years have it. And that's not the case. I only drank for two years. Um, I didn't drink a drop of alcohol for 13 or 14 years prior to... Um, when I started drinking, I went through a situation and started drinking a lot heavier than I should have, for sure. And there's no excuse for that. Um, based on that, if you're going through something, instead of turning to a bottle, turn to a friend or a therapist or somebody to listen to you. Uh, because it's definitely a better alternative. Um, I can't say that I wouldn't have this disease if I didn't start drinking because I already had precursors for it. Um, it runs in my family. Um, so I was destined anyway, but maybe I could have had longer before this getting into that. Or maybe if I didn't drink for those couple years, it's possible that they might have been able to find it and and uh, did some cure on it. But the alcohol was like, you know, taking a log, dousing it with gasoline and throwing it on the fire. Definitely wasn't good. Um, so with anyway, with that said, um, first, I want to talk about a MELD score, what that is. Um, MELD score is a factor that they use um, for figuring out what your life expectancy is. It's also how they determine, for most cases, uh, whether or not you're eligible for a liver transplant or not. It's a number system that goes from 6 to 40, and it's a mathematical equation. The lowest you can ever get is six. The highest it ever comes out to is 40. Uh, it's just the way the math problem works out. Uh, there are four things that they use in totaling this. Uh, one is sodium. Um, then it's your INR, which is your blood clotting factors, uh, your bilirubin, and what's called your creatine. And I may have said that wrong, but uh, that is your kidney function. So, and then they also factor in dialysis, whether or not you're on dialysis or not into that equation as well, um, which automatically bumps it up. Um, so my MELD score usually sits somewhere around about 17-ish um, for me. Um, but that is MELD. Uh, the higher the number, the greater chance you have of not surviving over 90 days. And the lower that number, the greater chance you have of surviving with the liver you have in you over the next 90 days. So most places 
you have to be over a certain number to qualify for a liver transplant to even be put on the waiting list. Where I live, it has to be over 20. So again, I'm not at 20 now. At one point I was in the high 30s, which generally you don't come back from that. And I, I did. And I consider myself extremely lucky to be where I'm at right now. Um, so positivity is hugely important with this, but I've gotten into that in some other videos. So if you want to check those out, feel free to. Um, I don't have any fancy like boards that go up to like point out these words and what they are and all that stuff. So um, I apologize for that. I am not that good at this YouTube thing, but I'm trying. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to explain them. Also, if you like what you see, and if you want to follow me, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I did recently hit over a thousand and I thank every last one of you for that. That is amazing and I am so glad that I have been able to reach so many people and I hope I'm doing some good in helping, help, helping answer some questions for people who have been going through the same kind of thing. Um, so again, thank you so much. It means the, <clears throat> excuse me, it means the world to me. All right, so back to what I was talking about. So um, they generally run a couple things. One's a, a comprehensive metabolic panel or a CMP um, that has your sodium levels, your creatine levels, your bilirubins, your ALT, AST, um, all those different things in there. And then there's a blood panel, which is your clotting factors and things like that. And then the iron R test is a separate one um, that they base on. So um, creatine is your kidney function. That's an important one for the MELD score. Uh, you want to be somewhere between 0.71 and 1.16. Um, I usually run in the, in the high 80s. So, I, so my kidneys are still good, thank goodness. Uh, some people, they're not. And um, if you're going through liver cirrhosis with kidney failure, that's even worse. And um, that's a tough situation to be in. And luckily my kidneys have been functioning and have been good every, the whole way through this. Um, but that's what creatine is. Uh, sodium level, um, again, that's sodium, but it's not the same as salt. Um, like your intake, like putting salt on food. Um, salt's not good for people who have liver disease because it can cause fluid retention, which we already have issues with. Um, so you should limit your salt for sure. But this sodium is not that. It's based on the sodium levels in your blood. So it's a little bit different. Um, generally that's between 136 and 145. Uh, that one's a tough one to be off. I've been really low before and, um, at one point when I was hospitalized a while ago, uh, your salt intake also helps your, your body stay active. Um, and when that's low, you tend to be lethargic. Uh, you tend to not feel very well. Um, Billy Rubin is, I don't know if you ever heard anyone say, oh, you're looking kind of yellow or your eyes are yellow. Um, that's the Billy Rubens. Um, the Billy Rubens is bile ducts and these this bile comes from your liver and your liver generally processes so generally you don't really have any bilirubins in your blood because your body flushes them out but when your liver is not functioning that bilirubin can go up um so uh bilirubin is like 0 0.02 to 1.2 um generally i run like around the three um, which isn't as bad as what it's been. I mean, I've been, you know, up into the teens and, uh, and I believe the twenties even, um, at one point with my Billy Rubin. Um, now that is an important factor, especially when they calculate your MELD score, but it's not necessarily a, a, a diagnosing factor when it comes to liver disease. INR is a huge one that they use when it comes to your liver disease. It's almost what I would consider one of the most important. That's your clotting factor. If your liver's not working right, you're not processing the proteins that it takes to be able to get the coagulants in your blood. And then your blood, um, you could cut yourself and just bleed and, and uh, you know, where you don't clot properly. Um, 
INR generally should be like a 1.0. Um, I, I'm usually 1.8 to 2.0 roughly. Um, but again, you shouldn't be over 1.0 on your INR, which is, again, your your rate at which your blood clots. Um, and then albumin is another thing that you may see on there, on the comprehensive metabolic panel. And albumin is generally right on a protein. Protein is just what it sounds, protein, like you get from meats and beans and things like that. But your liver doesn't process those proteins, like I said earlier, and those proteins do so much for your body. Not only do they help you heal, help you stay healthy, they give you energy. Um, so what happens is when you're protein deficient, your body starts eating your muscles. Hence why you lose muscle mass. And, uh, and when, when, you are, when your liver goes cirrhotic because of the fact that you're, you're protein deficient. So your albumin's generally, for people who have liver cirrhosis, your albumin's generally always low. That's why they recommend eating like six meals a day of high protein. Um, so I eat a lot of meat, especially pork, um, because pork's not as expensive. Uh, let's face it, beef is expensive uh, right now. And I'm not a huge chicken fan, although chicken's probably one of the best proteins that you could have. Uh, but I'm not a huge chicken fan. I, I prefer pork, that's just me. Uh, chicken and pork are good are good choices for it. Um, lots of protein, lots of nutrients. Um, those are really well. And again, it also matters how you cook it. Um, deep frying isn't as good because you get that salt content. Again, that can drive up your uh, ability to be able to pass the fluid out of you. You can retain more fluid that way. Um, so, uh, and then um, ALT and AST. You've probably heard those ones as some of the common liver enzymes. What those are, the, those are the amount of uh, cells they find in your blood samples. Um, generally, they're elevated with people that have bad livers. However, though, this is not a big one that they use in liver diagnosing. It's a good one to say that you're starting a problem but it's not one that they use in the overall length of knowing where you're at based on your liver because as your liver starts to deteriorate and stops working, it stops having as many cells. So at the earlier stages when those cells bleed off and you get a high number, those cells grow back and then you can have more. Well, as the liver gets damaged, these cells are not able to um, continue um, regrowing themselves. So your numbers may look completely normal for your ALT and your ASTs. And, but they're not, it's, it's a misnomer. It's, it's, it's not, um, it's not a, uh, a an exact, a diagnosing factor for liver disease. Uh, they do that with, with, uh, um, CT scans and things like that because they can see the liver and they can see the damage done to it. Um, like I said, the INR is a big one that they use for diagnosing those liver issues. Um, so uh, another thing that they may wind up doing for you is testing why you have liver disease. Um, these may be gene therapy, gene testing to find out if you have uh, hemochromatosis, which is a especially big in European descent. Um, that is basically iron overload. And for something like that, they may wind up taking blood from you, and what they call blood letting. Um, another one that they may test for is copper intake, which is Wilson's disease, which can cause liver failure. And again, there's so many other ones. Um, this video is not about diagnosing, you know, all these causes. It's more just about the tests that they use and how to better understand these these tests and these numbers that you may see. Um, so again, and I'm not a doctor, and I just live with cirrhosis, so this is stuff that I've learned over the past couple years of living with this disease and going through it. Um, 
so with that said, um, that's about the end of uh, this video. And uh, if you have any questions, please again, feel free to ask. Thank you again. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, like and uh, follow. I would really appreciate that. That helps me out. Um, also, um, with liver, living with liver disease, it's hard to make ends meet. There is a GoFundMe that's connected to the page. Uh, it's in the video description and in the uh, um, and also in the bio of my site here. So if anyone wants to help, feel free to. It's not required. I don't do these videos to make money. I do these videos to help people. Um, but again, for everybody who has donated, I thank you so much. Uh, it's been a huge blessing. I mean, there's been days that I didn't know how I was going to get food and somebody donated $10 and it went into my bank account and poof, there you go. You know, it, it's always been just enough and I am eternally grateful for that. And again, thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching this video. Um, stay blessed and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And if you're living with cirrhosis, um, just take it one day at a time and keep on fighting and stay positive, okay? All right. Take care, everyone.